Let's add a gun turret to our defenseless little craft. I'm going to plan to put that gun turret right up here in the middle of the top. So I'm going to move the grid plane up to the top. And now I'm going to bring it back to about where I want the turret. That's going to be where I'm my working area. Okay, the turret starts by creating the base. In my case, I'm going to use a generic mesh. You can use several different parts, but this is going to get converted into a, a turret part, so it can just be a generic mesh. I'm going to make an extrusion. I'm going to make a... turn off my snapping. I don't want to snap the things underneath. And here's a... Uh, 4x4 four four square turret. That's That should work. And I'm going to extrude that up one meter. And call that good. That's my turret base. Actually, not quite. I'm going to go into object mode here. And uh, I want to pull these ends together to sort of make a more of a conical shape out of this. They're going to squeeze toward the uh, grid origin, so I'm going to move the grid up a meter, and uh, and I guess at a back a meter. That'll give the front more slope. You'll see. Watch. I'm going to select these four vertices, and then I'm going to use the Shift S command to scale. Now the scaling command depends on the uh, position of the hand relative to the origin of the grid. Uh, you, a, as you move toward it and away from it, it scales the stuff. So it doesn't work to start right there. I'm going to move my hand out here somewhere. Scale, and now I've got some resolution to move my uh, my stuff. Oh, that's uh, that looks good. So I'm going to click there. That's going to be my turret base. We're done with face mode. And uh, there it is. Let's go up to the part menu now and turn that into a turret. Now we're going to plan ahead for this because when we convert this into a turret, uh, the orientation of the grid plane uh, determines the rotation plane of the turret base. So it's fine right now. It'll turn uh, flat to the plane. If we had, if we were making a turret on the side of the ship, for instance, we would want to properly orient the grid plane so that it, the turret knew how to rotate flat. So we're in good shape right here. Let's go up to the part menu, say make turret. And it's going to ask us one question, which is where is the pivot location? The location doesn't matter so much it, as uh, along the axis as it matters where the axis is. We're just really determining where the axis is that this turret rotates. If we turn line mode on, we'll see that. It determined that that's the plane of rotation of this turret, and uh, there's a line overlapping this blue line that shows what the turret thinks of as its up direction. So that's our turret base. Okay, we'd like to add a gun to this. We'll go to the turret, right click on it. Now, oh, I'm getting ahead, hold on. Uh, Let's notice that the turret has a combo box. Things with combo boxes can have multiple states. Uh, this turret has a potential of another state, which is the uh, gun state. It's the only one I can add. I'll go ahead and add that. And now on our combo box, we'll see that the turret has two states. Let's go to wireframe mode. Oops, that now in wireframe, you only get the wires for the state. In shaded mode, you get both. So in this case, we see the wires when the base is the current state. Let's go to uh, wireframe mode to work on our gun. Okay. I'm going to switch this to... Uh, before I switch it, just for visual reference, I'm going to move my, my grid down in Z half a meter. I made the turret uh, base one meter tall, so I'm going to run the gun through it out of it at the half meter height. Uh, oh, come down here and look at that. See, there we go, half meter height, and uh, and I'm actually going to move it a little forward. It 
this is kind of where I'm gonna where I'm gonna draw my gun. Alright, I'm gonna go with a finer resolution grid at 0.1 meters and switch to the gun. And we'll want to be in face mode to work on the faces of the gun. Now let's uh, in face mode. Let's add a spindle. Spindles are an easy way to make a convincing looking gun. Let's just give it a little bit of a breech looking thing here at the back, which we might never see. We'll bring this down. We'll kind of neck it down a little. Give it a big long barrel and uh, kind of a flash suppressor looking thing on the end. I'm going to bring it back in some so that from the front it sort of looks like a hollow gun barrel. And then we're done with that. We're going to rotate it around the green y-axis and eight sides will be fine. There's our gun. The back end is probably too fat, but let's take a look at that. Let's see what that looks like shaded. There's our, there's our turret. Okay, I'm going to just go with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, we're not quite done yet. We've defined the, uh, the geometry of the turret base and the gun. Now, the, in order for the design to know enough information to articulate or, or move the gun properly, it needs some properties set. So let's go up to the part menu, properties of the turret gun property position. It wants to know where the gun's pivot point is. Let's look at this solely in wireframe. Oops. There we go. I think the pivot point is going to be right at the center of our... That'll work. Right there. It wants to know the axis, so that means out the side. Uh, it's going to rotate around this axis as if it was... Uh, uh, an axle going through the gun to make it lift up and down. The turret base rotation rotates, uh, the turret base itself accounts for the uh, z-axis of rotation. The uh, So let's just place this, there we go. There's our, uh, no, I think we have one more question to answer. It wants to know where the gunfire emits from. This is where the where the bullets come out. Let's get down in here. We'll want them to come out right there. I want to make sure I'm not snapping to anything. I, I was lo looking at my toolbar. We're gonna the bullets are gonna come out right here. And they're gonna pull, go out in this direction. All right. One last question: Where does the gunner see out of when he's operating this turret? These turrets are all operated remotely. The gunner sits at sits or stands at their gunner station. And once they do that, they see out their their point of view changes to the point of view of where I'm going to place this camera point. I'm thinking that top corner there looks good. Let's put it right here. There's our gun turret our turret gun configured successfully. Yay! Okay, there's our gun all set up, and there's the base, and uh, there it is shaded. Okay, so the gun itself is set up. Now, how does the guy operate this thing? Let's go make the uh, the gunner's position. I'm gonna put it under the turret just by happenstance. You could place it anywhere. Uh, you know, you, you could get crazy and build all this geometry here that looked like he was standing and so, standing or sitting somewhere. I'm gonna keep it simple because this is a simple uh, video. I want my grid on the floor. And actually, I'm going to move it very slightly above the floor. Point 0.1 will work nicely. Now, somewhere in this area, the turret is up there. This, this is close enough. I'm going to create the turret station. The, uh, the part I want is a station. It's not... Uh, a, there is no swivel console gunner station. There never was in the old ship models and I, there was nothing to pour it over. This is only done as an integrated station which means I have to define a little a few things. Here we're going to define the tur turret gunner. It wants to know where the corner of the screen is. Now the gunner screen uh, doesn't really matter 
I want to make sure I don't snap the things underneath. The gunner screen uh, is never really seen by the gunner. It's more of a placeholder so you can identify where the gunner station is. And in, so because of that, I'm just going to put it in a dumb place. I'm going to put it on the floor, and uh, I'm going to have the uh, this be an energy weapon turret. I'm going to have the gunner stand on his station, and I'm going to have him stand right there and he faces uh, that direction. Okay, so now uh, the screen will be visible. I'm kind of sorry it's not visible right there, but the gunner screen will be visible when... Uh, hold on, I think it's just... I just recalled, it becomes a state of the gun. So now we have a third state, which is the gunner screen. And as I said, the gunner never really sees this screen. Uh, it just indicates the presence of the gunner station. I put it on the floor so that, uh, as an indicator of where it is. So now I'll know that I can walk up here, push E, and uh, I'll be in that station. When that happens, my point of view will switch to this point, and I'll when I, my body rotates and my head tilts, this gun will tilt up and down, and the base will rotate around. So essentially, that turret is done. Now, from a beauty perspective, we might like to texture that turret. So let's just finish this up. Let's go back to the base. Uh, go into uh, object mode. Oops, which object do I have selected? The turret. Okay. And I want to see this isolated. There we go. Okay, so there's the base. Uh, I'm going to select all of its faces, and uh, let's just try doing a quick texture wrap on this, and it'll probably be fine. We'll use hull material, and uh, it's kind of a smaller object, so I'm going to use that small size. Oh, let's try that again. Maybe we'll get a better look. I could probably move the grid, too, and get a better look. Oh, that that's all right. Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right, then let's do the uh, the gun. There's the gun. Let's project, select all of its faces, and uh, go to the texture wrapper. And in this case, I might want to actually try like a cylindrical wrap, just because it has, sort of has that shape. see wires. There we go. Move my grid up to there. And actually, since the cylindrical wrapper wraps down the x-axis, I really should change that. And I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to use this and just make this easier. Click here. I'm going to say I want it to go that way, and we'll have the axis lay like that. There we go. That works. All right. Let's see the faces, and uh, get, so we can see the results of our wrapping operation. And let's wrap something onto here cylindrically. Cylindrical wraps it ar around the. Uh, uh, the red axis indicated by this tiny, barely perceptible red dot on the icon. And uh, let's use uh, this metal material. We'll say that it is four meters long and it's going to wrap around uh, for one time. Okay. Alright, I don't know that I'm happy with that. But let's. Uh, I guess so. That that works. We don't have to get crazy here. That that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, okay, there's the texturing. So we could actually call that done. Now, one thing to consider is that by adding this turret, we have added hull volume, and that is considered hull volume. So let's go take a look at our ship design analysis. Where are we at? Now we don't have a big enough capacitor because we probably got a little bigger. Let's make that just a tiny bit bigger. The 
in this capacitor. Oh, no fuel. We're up against the no fuel wall. Let's add some uh, hull volume. Let's just add something kind of silly, like a big motor here on the side, or a fuel pod or something. I'm going to move my grid over here. Now the challenge is that we're trying to do this at very low quality. I could increase the minimum quality required to make this and uh, and everything would probably be fine. But we're going for an early basic spaceship. So I'm going to move this up uh, half a, uh, two meters. Because we're going for a basic design uh, I, I can get away with... it's harder to make a very small spaceship because the engines aren't efficient enough. Uh, when the quality level, minimum quality requirement goes up, engines and things all become more efficient and so they don't need nearly as much space. Uh, so in our case we can add hull volume to gain uh, some hull and then we'll have something to work with. So let's just add a hull part and do another spindle. These are always, uh, oops. Now here I just want it, fl I want it, the rotation back to the way it was without moving it. it uh, this option has a flat selection. That's exactly what that does. It leaves it where it is, but it puts it back flat to the, I guess, the native plane of the coordinate system. Now I'm going to just going to draw my spindle right in place here. We'll make some kind of fuel pod. That's what we're going to think of it as. Uh, and, uh, and we'll hope it doesn't intrude into our cabin too badly. Oh, that's probably good. Right there. Done. And obviously this line could have lots and lots of detail. In fact, let's, uh, let's back up. I want it to have a little more detail than that. We need a little more resolution to get it. Okay. Just the tiniest little things like that can give you the greatest little details. Just give it a little bit of a hole in the front end. Why it would have that? I don't know. And uh, we're going to spin it around uh, 12 times. The more times, the more smooth it is, but also uh, it, ta it starts to take a lot more polygons. Okay, there's our thing. It has this little, like, dimple in the side there. All right. So let's uh, let's go to a bigger grid. And I'm just, I can tell the origin is still in the middle of there. I'm just going to type control C for copy. And uh, let's do it an edit paste at. Okay, let's go put the other one over here. Kind of in the same spot on the other side. I don't want to snap though, because it'll get it'll end up down there on the floor. Okay, now the, now the nice thing about something like this, ooh, I hope those don't look too uh, too ugly. Uh, let's uh, select our little bullets here. They look like hollow hollow point bullets. I should texture them accordingly. In fact, before I copy that one, I'm going to texture it. Let's go into face mode. Select all the faces uh, and uh, hit our texture wrapper. Unwrap using hull material. That's usually a good default choice. Because you can always even just paint over that. What would we get here? I don't really like that. Let's change our grid so we can use the cylindrical wrapper. There we go. Then let's cylindrically unwrap it using uh, the metal material of the hull. Okay, that's alright. I, I can live with that. Let's go like that. Just yeah, that worked. Let's move our grid to here. Then when I pick it and copy it, I can come over here and do a paste at. Or I could actually move the... I, if I moved the uh, uh, grid 
and then just hit it did an edit paste it would paste it right there and the orientation would matter too if I rotated the grid and then pasted it it would be rotated Okay, now the the kind of fun thing about adding little things like that is that uh, uh, these we could scale, and by scaling them we can add incrementally more and more hull, and uh, that can give us uh, an ability to increase hull volume on our design without changing the design radically. Like we could make stretch them longer or make them fatter or something like that. And the other thing I'm going to point out is that I've been very careful not to make things go below my hull line here. And the only reason I did that is because if if I move this down, it's going to the ship will settle onto the bottom of the lowest point of the hull. And then I would have to add some more geometry here to like add a ladder or make my ladder path taller and climb up into what looks like empty space to get into the ship. And I didn't want to do that on this simple design. Uh, that actually doesn't look bad at all. So let's uh, let's take a look at our ship properties again. Well, now we're 1,119 cubic meters of volume. We had uh, 800 and some before, almost 900. So we've added uh, 200 cubic meters. Let's see what we can do with that. What does our wormhole need to be? 329 now. Let's go 330 just to make sure we have a little excess. And then we'll need a little more capacitor. And you'll notice the fuel is up high, higher now. All excess space goes to fuel. If you remove uh, volume from anything, it goes to fuel until the, the fuel is full. That's sort of like the default for the empty hull is fuel. So let's keep our uh, capacitor. Oh, we've got enough capacitor there. Let's like how much do we need? Forty, almost forty-six. Let's let's go to forty-seven to have an extra terajoule. All right. And uh, how else are we looking? Can we add some to our maneuver drive now? We got heavier, so we're going to need more maneuver drive to go faster. And actually, part of the point of that exercise was to reduce the quality requirement. Let's see if we can get away with a lower quality now. Let's try quality one. Looks like all we need is more capacitor. So that little bit of hull volume was all we needed to get this thing. It may have been all we needed. We need 49.8. Let's go 50. That's that's good. That's a few extra. Now our fuel is getting much lower now. And uh, we're, st we're still slow, but 134 isn't bad. Let's actually just go for 100. Compromise 125, and uh, what are we looking at for uh, anything down here? We should have a troop. Aha! Uh -huh, a little oversight. We need to add a troop berth, and that that is likely to change our uh, life support requirement slightly. It, it could make us add one. Uh, where are we going to put Mr. Troop? Let's. I want to snap my grid to these other people, if I can get s see their lines. There we go, and then I can have it at the same height as them. And uh, we'll add a detail, oops, which is a troop berth. And uh, I'm using arrow keys to rotate that. And uh, I'm just going to place it right there. Okay, that's good. Now let's bring up our design analysis again. We need more life support. Sure enough, we need one. We're at 140. Oh, we need more. Oh, that was maneuver drive. I missed the right one. There, we're at eight. Okay. Uh, we're at 126. I gave it some more maneuver drive. There we go. Now what else do we have? Let's get this thing done. It actually looks good here, but how much ho cargo hold do we have? 117. And then how long can we go on our fuel? We have 16 days of fuel. That's actually a lot of fuel in this game, especially for a beginning ship. So I'm going to take, I'm going to put some of that in cargo hold. I'm going to bring my fuel down to about a week. And that's a week with everything running. You could park this thing and have it sit for a long time. 
but now we can carry 306 commodities. That's a much better cargo complement. All right, nothing else changed. Let's save that and let's. Uh, I think we're going to call that the new improved model with gun. Uh, but otherwise, that's done for now till our next installment.